Let's see how we can use Power Query to rename a column based on that column's position. Now, why would we want to do this? Let's say at the end of every day, all of the sales transactions for that day get exported into an Excel spreadsheet. So you can see here the files each day represents a different day's sales and the files are named based on the sale date. Let's look at the contents of one of these files. Each file has transactional information. The problem with the data is there are no date time stamps for each transaction. The day of the transaction is inferred from the file's name. If we were to take several days worth of sales and append them all together using Power Query, we would lose focus of exactly which day each transaction fell. So what we need to do is we need to incorporate the file's name as a new column of information and essentially stamp each transaction with that date. For our report, we only want to analyze the sales of the last sale date. So we need to navigate to this folder and extract the latest created file. So let's go to Excel and we'll go to Data, Get Data, From File, From Folder. We'll navigate to the file holding the data files and hit Open. Here we see a list of the metadata of all the files in that folder. We'll go to Transform Data, and the first thing we need to do is locate the file that was added most recently. We can't really use the file names for this, because anybody can name a file anything. So what we'll do is we'll scroll over to the Date Created column. This is much more trustworthy than the File Name column. So we'll run a filter on this, where we'll use a Date Time filter, and we'll locate the latest file. So we can see October 4th, 2023, was the last time a file was added. Now that we've located the latest file, the only columns that we're really interested in is the content column that actually holds the transactional data and the name column because that's what holds the date stamp. Now I'm going to remove all the other columns and to do that we can select these two columns and say right click remove other columns. Now I would like to have the name column to the left of the content column. Now I could click and drag this over but notice how that adds a new step called reordered columns. So I removed the unwanted columns and did the column reorder. You can actually do both of these steps in one step. So now going back to having filtered it for the last added file, the order you select the columns when you remove other columns will perform a sort based on that selection order. So by selecting name first and then content, when I right click and remove the other columns, I not only remove those columns, but I get a column resort at the same time. Now it's time to extract the content from the binary file. There are a lot of ways to do this, but the way that I'm going to do it is to add a custom column and then to use the Power Query function, Excel Workbook. This will point to the content column, hit OK, and now I have a new column with a table. Now that table is not actually the data. If we click next to the hyperlink for table, we see that it's just the statistical information about what's in this file, like sheets and tables and print ranges and their names. The only thing I really need out of this is the data column because that's where the sales transactions are. I don't need the content column any longer so I'll remove that and then I'll go to the expand table button and tell it that the only thing I want is the data. So that has then created another nested table and if we click next to the hyperlink and peek into the file we can see the transactions. Now I would like all of the information from this table so when I expand the nested table I'll select all of the columns and hit OK and now I have all of the sales information along with the file name as a stamp. Let's go up to transform and promote the first row as a header row. Here's where the problem really kicks in. The name of the first column is being taken from the file name. And since every day the file name changes, the name of the first column is going to change. Let's remove the change type step. We don't need that right now. If I were to go to that column and rename it to date, you can see in the M code that the rename column step is hard coded to look for a column name called sales 4th of October 2023.xlsx. Tomorrow, when that changes to the 5th of October, this step is going to fail and the query is going to break. We need to find a way to automatically discover the name of that column and then rename based on that discovered name. So I'm going to delete that rename column step. And I'm going to show you how this discovery is done and I'm going to do it in stages but eventually we'll roll all of these stages up into a single step. The first thing I'm going to do is start a new function and I'm going to discover all of the column headings and place those in a list. So I'll use the table function called column names and we'll use the previous steps output. This will produce a list of the column names of the previous step. Since the column I want is always in the first position of this list, I can add a row identifier to this M code. In this case, since I want the first row, and Power Query always starts counting from zero, I'll point to the zero row, and right there is the name of the column heading. 
that's what I want to change to something else like date. So this is the dynamic version of discovering the first column's header. Because I don't want to retype this, I'm going to highlight it and copy it. I'm going to delete that step. It's almost always easier to do something initially in a static format and then make it dynamic. So I'm going to go in here and rename this column to date. Now that has hard-coded that column's name into the step code. But now I'm going to take that hard-coded data and replace it with the dynamic discovery of the column heading. Now when I hit check, we don't see anything change. So the table rename columns function is using the table column names function to discover the name of the first column and then rename it to date. Now at this point, if I want that date to be a usable date, I can't use it as it is because if I set it to a date data type, it's going to turn into an error. And that's because it's a file name with an Excel extension. So just to finish up the exercise, we'll transform this column by doing an extract text between delimiters, and we want to extract everything between the first encountered space and the period. Now that we've isolated the date information from the file name, I'm going to select the entire table with a control A, run a data type detection, and then go to home and load this back out into Excel. So now in Excel, we can see that the last sale date was the 4th of October. Returning to the folder of sales exports, the 4th of October was the file with the last sales. If we were to paste in a new day sales, and I've made this one significantly further into the future, so now this is the 12th of December, we can return to Excel, right-click on the previous Power Query output, and choose Refresh. And now we're looking at the 12th of December. If we go back into Power Query, we see the date column worked even though the first column's information changed. Going back a few steps when we initially promoted the header row, what was the 4th of October is now the 12th of December. But the next step that does the rename is not looking for the 12th of December. It's just looking for whatever header is in the first column of the table. So that's how we can rename a column based on its position instead of what the actual column's heading name is. Thanks for watching. And remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.